We took our kids out to Green Bluff to do the pumpkin patches a few weeks ago and I just wanted to share with you my experience because it's something that I've been wanting to do and hadn't done yet since moving out here. So here's an overview for you in case it's on your radar that you want to go do pumpkin patches at Green Bluff. Thank you for watching. My name is Leslie. I am a realtor here in North Idaho. I'm also a mom to four kids. They're all elementary age. Well, actually one is now in middle school. Um, we moved out here about two years ago. I am a full-time agent and I really, I have this channel as a place to share what it's like living in North Idaho, talk about different neighborhoods, communities, also fun community events like this video, just trying to give some people some insight into what it's like to be a North Idahoan. All right, so if you have not, I did a video a couple weeks ago about events going on in the fall and I talked briefly about Green Bluff. Green Bluff is not in North Idaho, like maybe pumpkins don't grow well in North Idaho because there are not like, there are not very many pumpkin patches here in like the Coeur d'Alene area. So Green Bluff is an area actually north of Spokane that has a bunch of pumpkin patches all like smashed together. It's like a very small radius with a high density of farms with pumpkins and apple orchards and breweries and like all sorts of different stuff. It's very cool. As you drive around, there's just like tons of signs about all the different farms. I wish we could have spent a whole lot longer out there, um, but we really just went to this one farm. So it's about an hour from Coeur d'Alene or Hayden. So we went to Seamer's farm in Green Bluff, mostly because my kids had a Friday off of school and Seamer's farm was open. The other one I had my eye on was called Beck's farm but they were not open on Friday, so they were out. We maybe we'll try that one next year. My oldest child is 11. We have a lot of pumpkin patch experiences under our belt, and those are all like Washington pumpkin patches. We moved out here from Southwest Washington. So our pumpkin patch experiences are muddy, usually, like rainy, muddy. This was the nicest pumpkin patch day that I've ever seen. It was amazing. Blue skies, warm, beautiful. So that alone was incredible. We had previously experienced like getting our truck stuck in the pumpkin patch parking lot and at Seamer's Farm, their parking lot was impeccable, no muddiness at all, like not even an issue. Obviously people are not as worried about water in this neck of the woods as we were out in Southwest Washington. The pumpkin patch itself was pristine. It was not even like rows of pumpkins. They had like pre-picked pumpkins and then had beautiful little gatherings of pumpkins together. They, they had lots of pumpkin varieties that, I don't know, I don't know pumpkin terminology, like heirloom pumpkins, artisan pumpkins, I don't know. White ones, green, pink, like beautiful colors. And uh, when you're, your admission gets you into the pumpkin patch, but you do pay extra for the pumpkin, so just keep that in mind. And they also had strawberry picking there if you wanted to pick strawberries, which I thought that was pretty cool. And at this place in particular, they provide you wheelbarrows so that you can easily transport your pumpkins back to your car. I thought that was a nice touch. They had really neat old antique tractors lined up, which my kids love to climb on those. It's a great photo op. That was really nice. Tons of vendors. Like, I didn't know that it was gonna be such a vendor heavy event which is sometimes with kids, you're like putting their blinders on, like don't look, like we don't need to stop and touch all of these people's like handcrafted beautiful things. Side note about those fancy pumpkins is that I learned the green ones are impossible to carve. It's like they're, they're like cement, they're so solid. So keep that in mind. My son had an uh, image of in his mind of what he wanted to do, which was to find a like a, block like green pumpkin which he did and he was going to make frankenstein but we were even using like a power tool to try and cut into that thing and it was a total no-go so um now you know other thing that i loved about this pumpkin patch is that they serve beer they have the spokane brewery is that what it's called i don't remember specifically what the name is off the top of my head um but they had a brewery on site. I don't know if it was a brewery or if they were just like serving the beer there in the big barn, but I thought that was kind of nice. I didn't even really want a beer, but because like they had access to one and I've never had the opportunity to have a beer at a pumpkin patch before, I did it and it was very nice. We let the kids just like play on the big bouncy slides and we sat in the sun and had a beer 
and it was warm and we were out in the country. So that was very nice, very nice experience. They also have a corn maze and a hedge maze, which kind of like weave into each other. Also very fun, you like go through the corn maze and then it goes to this big castle structure that they built, the kids loved it. Um, talk to your kids first about like rules for the corn maze because I have a little boy that we had not established rules and he went just like running off in another direction. And I had to choose between him and his little sister and I went with the younger one and then he was lost in the corn maze and there were some tears shed. So just there's your Warning on that topic. I already mentioned that they have the big bouncy slides. They also had a smaller like corn maze area, but which is really just like hay, hay bales stacked up for littler kids to play on. And then last but not least, they had tractor rides. They had two of them. There was a like actual tractor pulling the carts behind it. And then a smaller one. Well, I don't even know how to describe like the little barrels behind it and there's no signage about this so like there was two lines but you weren't sure like what line was going to what and people were like we're waiting for the small tractor ride and the large tractor ride line and anyways just be aware that there's two lines very close together and they're not for the same thing um there's also no one policing the small tractor ride line at all and so it was like kind of a kid free for all and um just again be aware in general we had a great time out at green bluff i definitely will go back it was absolutely worth the hour long drive to get there i wish that we had had spent like an entire day out there and not just an afternoon we didn't have the time to spend more than just a couple of hours though because there was really a ton to see lots of you pick farms and i do wish that we could have just gone and spent more time maybe gone apple picking or gotten some more strawberries something like that but now we know we'll go back on a different day even this year who knows it's october is not over yet so let me know if you have any questions let me know if there's any farms that you've been to out in that area that you would recommend a lot of these farms also are doing like halloween themed events so i'll post a link down below to the green bluff website so you can check that out and maybe go see it for yourself all right, as always, if you are thinking about making a move to North Idaho and you wanna talk about the real estate market out here, give me a call anytime. My contact information is down below in the description.